Hey everyone, welcome to the Captain Drone YouTube channel. My name is Steve and this is a new product by Jumper. It is called the Jumper T20 Gemini. Now, if you're looking at this new product and going, it kind of looks like the Jumper T20S. Well, in fact, it's pretty much the same Jumper, except this is the Gemini version, which means that it has two transmitters built into it. So like all ELRS radios on the market currently, this is the month of December in the year 2023, every ELRS radio on the market currently has one transmitter in it. This one, as I mentioned, has two. So Jumper is advertising this new radio as the most compact, full-featured ELRS Gemini radio on the market today. And they would be correct because there is no competition for this right now. Now, I'm sure many of you watching this video are not familiar with ELRS Gemini, but Gemini is a new thing in the ELRS transmission and reception type field of communication. And this baby has it. And pretty soon in a year from now, I'm pretty sure all radios on the market will have it. But Jumper is out of the gate pretty quick. So now you're wondering what the heck is Gemini? I e l r s. Well, you know, I got to try to explain this in simple terms. So I'm going to try to keep it really simple so that it makes sense to you. So think of this. Here's my fat shark goggles. You know, most goggles we use in the FPV hobby have more than one antenna. In the old days, we had one antenna. You just got the video reception. But if you have two antennas, they call that diversity. So if we look at goggles by DJI, this one actually has four antennas, two on the top, two on the bottom. And you look at Walksnail and it's got four antennas as well all these antennas and if I pull out one of my FPV drones this one has a crossfire receiver on it but the crossfire receiver has two antennas so you have an antenna in the front and an antenna in the rear that's so if the drone is coming at you or going away from you you have good reception so in the RC hobby we refer to much of what I just showed you as diversity so in other words the antenna that gets the strongest signal that's the signal that you get either transmitting or receiving just by diversity and it flicks between the two antennas getting the signal so fast that you don't even know it. The Gemini system, not like that. Now, if I knew my audience was really conversant in the ELRS packet transmission technology and methodology, then this would be very easy to explain to everybody, but I'm sure many people watching right now are still confused on, go back, what does ELRS stand for? So I guess in a nutshell, to explain what Gemini is to the layman is to say that this radio, if connected with another Gemini receiver at the other end, the chances of losing reception between the transmitter and the receiver in a highly congested area is minimized. You can't get any better than this currently with the current technology of the year 2023 and possibly 2024. So without making it too confusing, how about I power this on and show it to you up close and kind of explain things as I go through it. Here we go. So before I power it on, you'll notice that the antennas on top are very different from what you'd normally expect. That's so you can place the antennas at 90 degrees. We do that in the diversity world and it's also popular in the Gemini world. So in other words, I'll take one antenna, I pop it up like this and I could take the other one and I could pop it out like like that. So you see, I've got a 90 degree thing happening there. You can put them any way you wish. And you'll see in the Gemini system, I can actually pick which antenna I want to be functioning at any one time. Say I want this one to work, or do I want this one to work, depending on how I position it, or do I want them to turn into a diversity antenna where this one gets the signal, but if the signal's stronger on this one, I want you to switch. You can do that. And then of course, in Gemini mode, they're both on and they're both powering out a huge amount of frequency. As a matter of fact, Fact, this thing shoots out at one watt per transmission channel. So most ELRS products on the market max out at one watt and it uses a lot of power out of your radio. So this has two one watt systems in it. So it probably sucks the battery dry, but I'm not really sure. I've used it now for a few hours flying drones around the house and uh, battery seems pretty good. And if you're wondering about batteries, the batteries are the same you put in your T20S. Also, I should point out that looking at all the buttons and the configuration and the menu system and everything else, I don't really see any difference between the previous uh, T20S by Jumper and the new T20S Gemini by Jumper. You'll notice in their documentation and branding, they don't call it a T20S Gemini. However, this is a T20S radio. It's got the upgraded everything on it, upgraded joysticks, all the good stuff. So let's do this really quick. I'll power this radio on and you'll see it's the normal HTX system. I'll show you a close up. Welcome to HTX. And just like the previous radios, you can have voices in it for your switches. Um. 
Flight mode horizon. Flight mode acro. Buzzer active. Buzzer off. Just the normal things I add to every radio. Where it does get different is when you go into the ELRS transmission system. So just like on any radio in the world, you would press the systems button. So I'm going to do that now. Mine says Express LRS under Tools, and I'm just going to press the Enter button. And you'll see it's a little different because we have the Gemini system. So if we start at the top, we have our packet rates, which you're all familiar with if you're in the ELRS system. If you're not sure what the packet rates do, that's something for you to configure yourself. It depends on how much latency you wish between the radio and the receiver in whatever product you have and how good of a connection with error correction you wish to have. So you can see the packet rate currently I have it at 50, which we're all used to. You can bring it up. I'm just going up here. I'm going to go up to D mode. There we are. I'm in the D mode. And as many of you know, if you're in the D mode, it's a better packet transmission connection rate, except there's a lot of latency because what's happening is it's sending out those packets four times on different frequencies and uh, it's going the same thing over and over. So there's a bit of latency there, but you have a very good connection, but you can't really fly too far. At least that's how I understand it. I've never flown far on that. And of course you have the F band, which now we're going way up uh, and you can see that uh, the numbers go up. I think it goes up to a thousand. Yeah, there we go. Apparently I've never used that, but on the F mode, I call it the F band on the F mode. Uh, you'll get the, the lowest latency, but the worst connection. So that's why most people fly ELRS on the normal settings like 50, 100 or 150 or 250. Yeah, those are the common ones. So keep in mind what I said about the D mode, you know, sending out four packets on different frequencies and there's a lot of latency because that's going to apply to Gemini mode. So let's hop down. So I'm going to take it out of Gemini mode. It's in Gemini right now. Say you don't have a Gemini receiver in your drone because you have drones that were built this year or in previous years, but they're all using version three of ELRS. You can say, I just want to use antenna one. This is your antenna one right here, or I can go and use antenna two. And that's your antenna two right there. So that's what I mentioned. You can pick your antennas. Hey, I don't know why you want to do that, but maybe you want to do that. So you're only going to use the output power of one transmitter when you do that. So your radio is not going to use a lot of power. Then you can select switch and on switch is what I mentioned previously that whatever is going to receive the strongest signal is the one that's going to be used. And that's probably what most people are going to use. So it's going to bounce back and forth. So it's going to use two transmitters, uh, but they're going to go, you know, back and forth between each other. So I assume you're going to use a bit of power. And of course you have Gemini mode and for Gemini mode, you need a Gemini receiver. Now Gemini mode, I'll try to explain this really simply. As I mentioned, keep in mind what I mentioned about D mode, where I said it sends out packets and it sends out like four of them on different frequencies so it's repetitive so since it's repetitive it's doing it very fast it's very slow and it causes latency gemini mode is kind of the same thing however you get rid of the latency because you send out i don't know let's just say you send out four packets with this transmitter and four packets with this transmitter all different frequencies all different frequencies but at the same time so your drone on the other end is not going to lose reception. Now I use drone because most people are going to use this with drones, but you know, if you're flying an RC helicopter or a plane or a car or boat, it's the same thing. Now this is very new ELRS technology. So there's not a lot of receivers on the market that are Gemini. I have one here. This is from Beta FPV and uh, it's kind of large and it looks like it's got all the chips look to be doubled. So it's like there's two receivers on this thing, I assume. I don't know a lot about the receivers on the Gemini side, but this is what you would need to have that awesome, awesome technology working. And I'm going to say right now, I wouldn't be surprised if in the year 2024, more and more FPV drones come out with micro receivers, even smaller than this, but they are full Gemini compatible receivers. Now, if you're an early adopter to technology, you're probably wondering why would I get this now? Because most of the drones on the market are not Gemini and all the drones I own are not Gemini or the RC planes or the RC cars, whatever. It doesn't matter if you have an ELRS receiver in any of those, you can still use this radio. You won't get the benefits of Gemini, but you can use the switching technology to switch between the antennas and you might get a little bit better range. So this radio by Jumper is so new on the market. I see it on their website, but I don't see a price for it. So I don't know what the price is on this thing. If you buy this, let me show you what you get. So you get the radio, you get the manual. They have a brand new manual for the Gemini. You get the carry case. Inside the carry case, you get a lanyard. You get stickers to put on the buttons so you know what the buttons do. And you get some extra springs for the joy 
joysticks if you don't find they're tight enough. And of course you can get in a mode two, which mine is, or a mode one with the throttle over on the other side. Now I'm gonna tell you something interesting. I'm still very new to the Gemini system and uh, I have been using Gemini for about a month and a half now. Let me show you. Beta FPV makes the Super G Nano Transmitter and I stuck it on the back of my pocket ELRS. So I've got ELRS and ELRS and you might have seen me in some videos flying with the pocket and I'm using this transmitter and I use it in switch mode for many of the drones on the market and it seems to work well. So this being all in one vice this being I have to attach a module to it and then rely on the functions of the radio connecting to the module and all that stuff. Now it's all in one, which is much better. So this I can carry on going forward with all my drones from the past and the future and everything should work fine. It doesn't matter if it has Gemini or if it has normal ELRS, it's all going to work perfect. And the reason I say that is it might seem like new technology to many of you watching, but the Gemini technology has been around for a few months and it's quite proven. You can watch many videos on it. So I would say if you get this, you're not going to have any issues. And as per normal, every other manufacturer of radios will have to catch up now and make their own Gemini radio. So all the popular radios you see on the market who use ELRS and Edge TX are going to come out with an Edge TX Gemini ELRS model. And full disclosure, Jumper did send me this radio, but every time Jumper sends me something, they send me no instructions, no directions. They don't care if I review it, show it, use it, toss it in the garbage, whatever, but they're always happy when I do make a review. So I'm sure Jumper's going to be happy that I'm making this review. They also sent me, I don't know why, but they also sent me a whole bunch bunch of tops for the joysticks. Well, some for the joysticks. They don't really apply to me as a thumber. You've probably seen some pictures of them now. Also, some of them look like buttons to replace the buttons on the radio. I'm not really sure because there's no instructions with anything and I can't find them on the website. So final things to say about this, you would imagine since it can shoot out at one watt on one antenna and one watt on the other antenna, that's a lot. I can't see anybody doing that unless you're flying from here to China. Things are going to get hot because you're using a lot of power. So there is a fan on the back and Jumper says this baby will not overheat. It's very efficient. ELRS technology has come a long way. Things really don't overheat anymore, so I can't see it overheating. But the interesting thing on the back is that it almost looks like you could place a module on the back. So I have a Jumper 4-in-1 module that I placed on my T20S and it almost looks like I could place that there. But if I do that, that fan's not gonna push a lot of air because that thing's gonna be blocking it. So I'm really not sure. So that's gonna do it for me. I'm gonna end this here because I am not a deep, deep, in-depth technology guy on the Gemini system or ELRS. I know what I know and I know enough to be dangerous. If you want some in-depth knowledge on Gemini, go check out Joshua Bardwell or Mads Tech Channel. Those guys, you know, this is what they live for. They only look at technology and they only look at one thing. Whereas my channel is everything in the RC hobbies. So I don't have time to like go deep into this stuff. Anyways, guys, I'm going to put links to this product below, probably to the Jumper website. If I find it for sale any place, I'll put a link to it wherever it's for sale. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have questions on this new radio, something I forgot to cover, well then post your question below and I'll get back to you. But for now, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and I'll catch you in a future video with many more reviews. Until then, I say bye.